Hey everyone, I'm Brian and I'm a developer advocate here with Linode. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the Linux distros that are available on Linode, how they're different, and when one might be a better choice than another. Before we get into it though, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and give this video a like if you found it helpful. Alright, let's get started. Before I look at specific distributions, it's worth mentioning that all Linux distributions share one major thing in common, and that's they're all based on the Linux kernel. Where they diverge from one another is in their configuration, their release schedule and updates, their support, and their approach to distribution of software. And it's those primary factors as well as some other things we'll be looking at today. The first distro we're going to talk about is Arch Linux. This is an original distro with a rolling release model that's continuously updated. And when I say original distro, I just mean that Arch Linux is not based on anything and it's not downstream from another distribution. For some other distros we'll be looking at, this is not the case. All software on Arch Linux is managed and downloaded via a tool called Pacman. Pacman is able to tap into both official repositories as well as unofficial repositories such as the AUR, which is the Arch User Repository. From both these sources you can get nearly everything you need. The software that you get from these repositories is often very new, and some people really like this and others don't. Keep in mind though, and this applies to all Linux distributions, just because the repository doesn't contain the software you want, you can always download it from somewhere else, that's not a problem. Arch Linux also tries to stay very lightweight and rely on the user to make the decisions on how they want their system to be, and that makes it a fantastic choice for maximum customization and then no real bloat. Arch Linux is also a fantastic choice when you want the newest available software rather than the most stable software. Next distribution we're going to look at is CentOS, which stands for Community Enterprise OS. This is a very popular distribution, and it's because it sits downstream from Red Hat Enterprise Linux. CentOS can be thought of as Red Hat Enterprise Linux without the branding, without the support, and of course without the price tag. CentOS releases are typically every 3-5 to five years, which are supported for 7-10 to 10 years after that. However, be aware that at the time of this recording, they are looking at transitioning CentOS to what's called CentOS Stream, which will be a rolling release model version of CentOS. The software on CentOS is most commonly downloaded via YUM, and YUM is able to tap into official repositories as well as unofficial repositories. Now, because CentOS does have an enterprise focus, all the software that you're going to get from the official repositories is likely to be pretty old, but it's going to be very stable. In many cases, it's going to be perfectly okay that it's older, but if you're going to want the newest stuff available, you'll have to get that either through an unofficial repository or just installing it yourself. In the end, CentOS is a fantastic choice when you have high security needs, when you only want the most stable software available, and when you need an operating system to have an enterprise focus. The next distro we're going to look at is Debian, which is another original distro. While Debian is not downstream from anything, there are tons of Linux distributions that are downstream from Debian. A new version of Debian typically comes out every two years with long-term support for about five years. Software for Debian is acquired via the apt package manager, and apt has access to both official repos as well as unofficial repos. Similar to CentOS, Debian is going to typically favor stable software over the newest software. Debian is also one of the oldest distributions, as it's been worked on now for over 25 years, which makes it very mature and very reliable. And therefore, it's a fantastic choice when you need reliability and stability, reliable releases, and very comprehensive software distribution. And the final distro we're going to look at is Ubuntu Server. This distribution sits downstream from Debian, so they're able to inherit a lot of that maturity and stability of Debian while also doing some things differently on their own. Ubuntu has a very consistent release schedule with releases every six months and then long-term support versions every two years. Because Ubuntu Server is downstream from Debian, it also gets its software via apt. However, because Ubuntu maintains their own software repositories, you do typically get newer software on Ubuntu than you would on Debian. This distribution is definitely considered a batteries included distribution. You're going to have a lot of the stuff that you want and probably a lot of stuff that you don't want. But that's part of what makes it a very well-rounded distribution. One of the main benefits of Ubuntu Server, which often goes overlooked, is the broad online resources available. The Ubuntu community is very large and they ask a lot of questions, which means if you have a question about this particular distribution, you're very likely to find it online. Some other less popular distributions is kind of hit or miss whether you get an answer to your question. And of course, being downstream of Debian, Ubuntu Server is able to leverage the successes of Debian. And this brings about more stability and reliability, which is great for the user. One final note, keep in mind that Linode's Linux distribution offerings is not limited to just what you've seen in this video. Linode also offers Alpine Linux, Fedora, Gentoo, Slackware Linux, and OpenSUSE. And that's it. Definitely experiment and try out some Linux distributions and see which is the best fit for you. 
In fact, there's going to be a link in the description if you want to sign up for your own Linode account to experiment with these distributions. And definitely let us know if you have any questions in the comments, and be sure to stay tuned for more tutorials. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you later.